Now let us start with futures. What exactly is futures? Before going for that, let me give you a quick idea because someone asked, what is equity? So I'll just give you an idea of equity. Say a company is owned by a person and he wants to increase the size of his company. How can he do that? He requires money for that. And how does he get the money? Money he can get by different means. One is taking a loan. But if he takes a loan, he has to return it with interest. Correct? Second, part, second way of raising capital is by issuing bonds. What is bond? Bond is also a form of loan. Debt. Okay, DBT. So debt means what? A loan, actually. But if whether it's a loan or whether it's in the form of bonds, the condition is on a particular day, you have to return the principal amount along with the interest. Sometimes the amount required is so huge and all that amount will be invested in development of the company, growth of the company, that it is not easily possible to return that capital. Okay. So what the companies do is, on paper, they divide the company into equal parts. That is why the name equity. In common language, we call it stock or shares. Okay. Now, let us consider there is a company, XYZ company. Now, what this company involves? See, this company involves different types of investment in it. There will be capital investment. Money, whatever was invested by original, those who built a company. There may be intellectual property. Okay. Then there may be different assets which were acquired. Maybe machinery, maybe uh, raw material purchase, maybe whatever, whatever. Maybe land, maybe building. So all this together forms the company. Some assets, you can see them like land, like building, like machinery. Some assets, you cannot see them, like intellectual property. Or the, you, you, can, you can see its outcome, but not the substance itself. How much brainstorming the owner has done or the founder has done, you don't know, you can't see that. Whatever efforts he has put in, you can't see that. But together we consider, let us say the company is worth, say, 10 crores. And now company wants to raise the capital. So what the company did? On paper, this 10 crores was divided into 1 crore equal parts of 10 rupees each. All right? This 10 rupees, we call it the face value of that equity or of that share. Means the share is actually having 10 rupees of input in it. But... This company is consistently profit making. It has a good uh, uh, opinion, public, good public opinion about it. That is called goodwill. And that is why company decides to sell 10 lakh shares. That is 10% of these shares to public. Each share worth 10 rupees. So what is the value of the 10 lakh shares? One crore is the face value. But company says, no, we are already into profits and uh, we already we are enjoying goodwill. So we are not going to sell it for 10 rupees. We are going to sell it for 50 rupees per share. So company is going to take 40 rupees per share extra. This is called the premium. Usually premium is not this high. Okay. But in some companies, it can be even higher also. Anyway, so a 10 rupee share, you are going to sell at 50 rupees. So you are planning to raise how much amount? 5 crores. Okay. And 90% shares remain with the owners. 10% only were shared to, sold to public. Right? So now automatically the net worth of the owner increases because he's holding 90% shares. And now every share of 10 rupees worth has now become 50 rupees. Correct. So 10, he sold 10 lakh shares out of 1 crore shares. Now what happens? These 10 lakh shares were purchased by people. 
so every one of them becomes owner of a very small part of this company okay if company makes profit part of the profit company keeps for further development and part of the profit company distributes to the shareholders that is called dividend now if company's profit is growing people expect that company will keep making more and more profit and they have a projection mental projection that okay fine today the share may be worth 50 rupees why i am buying it because i am sure soon it will reach 60 70 so mentally they are projecting the price which will be in future okay that is why they are buying this equity now let us not go into intricacies of it if you want the details of all this it is already been covered in a video in uh, your i have given you a free uh, course introduction to investing so in that you will find more details about it but at present this is what forms equity or the shares now when companies have different prices whatever is the price of one share multiplied by how many shares are available in market that is called the floating capital of the company because these shares are called floating shares which are available in the market so floating capital all right and also it is sometimes called as market capitalization and companies are graded based on market capitalization into large cap companies mid cap companies and small cap companies now though there is no hard and fast thumb rule as such usually it is considered those companies which have market capitalization greater than 20000 crore are large cap between 5000 crore to 20000 crore are mid cap and smaller than 5000 crore small cap now some people will say instead of 5000 crore they may say 1000 crore it's individual perception at the same time what is important for us is those which are large cap companies those which are leaders in their respective sectors for them the stock exchange has allowed a separate category of trading also and that is called derivative category now what is derivative derivative means derived from or obtained from okay just the way we say we have orange juice how we got orange juice from oranges so orange juice is obtained from or derived from oranges so orange juice becomes derivative and orange is called underlying u n d r l y i n g underlying okay same way when you talk of futures and options they are derivatives they are derivatives of what they are derivatives of some underlyings what are these underlyings underlyings may be shares that is equity it may be index like nifty bank nifty etc then uh, it may be commodity like crude oil natural gas uh, industrial metals like aluminium copper nickel zinc or maybe bullion that is gold silver agricultural commodities etc maybe currency foreign exchange okay if you go to other countries like united states they are having futures of interest rates also they have weather futures also whether they what will be temperature will increase or decrease okay so futures contracts that is derivatives can be of anything in india we have uh, futures of all these categories like equity indices Uh, then uh, commodities, uh, in uh, then uh, these currencies, etc. Okay, forex, foreign exchange. Now, when we talk of these derivatives, we have to remember one thing: derivative ultimately depends on the underlying. Just the way, if oranges are good, your orange juice is going to be good. Oranges are bad, juice is going to be bad. Same way. derivative price depends on price of underlying if underlying price is increasing derivative price will also increase okay or underlying price is decreasing futures price is also decrease likewise so it's really related 
and what are why are derivatives mainly made up they are made up for protection hedging hedge means a fence all right so hedging means putting a fence putting a compound why do we put a fence so that nobody should encroach so we should not incur losses right so basic functioning of derivatives is to protect at the same time we can also speculate using derivatives as long as the speculation is controlled as long as the risk is under control this becomes a business if you are not doing any control if you are just taking wildly any positions that becomes gambling okay so derivative is actually a contract and no shares change hand while trading derivatives i'm saying trading shares change hand when these contracts expire in some cases so we are going to see that okay so what are these contracts we say there are two main types of contracts one we call futures and one we call options we are going to see these today futures will definitely complete today options we, we won't be able to finish today so whatever we can we'll cover today now these contracts have fixed time period for which they are valid and the last day when these contracts expire that day is called as expiry day what is the expiry day expiry day is last thursday of a month all right that is called derivative expiry day there are other days also which we'll see a little later at at present for futures contracts most of the contracts expiry is on last thursday of the month if thursday happens to be a holiday whichever is the previous working day that is the last expiry day of that contract and now okay you made a contract to buy shares or you made a contract to sell shares what who is going to take care that uh, really the other party which you don't know who is that they are going to honor this contract or not or you are going to honor this contract or not what if you run away so national stock exchange guarantees that all the contracts which you are open they will see to it that the contracts are fulfilled okay now uh, how many contracts are available at a time let us Stick to futures at present. Later on, we'll when we study options, that time we'll see details on options. Right now, there are about hundred and thirty shares, which are traded on futures exchange. Commodities, currencies, all are there. Now, at present, we'll stick to futures because for futures, uh, stock futures, I mean, stock and index futures, their rules are very very uniform. Okay. commodity futures on the other hand have different rules and there are different rule for different commodities naturally it becomes difficult to memorize everything so only if you are going to trade into commodities whichever commodity you are going to trade that rules we will have to check but as far as stock future and index futures are considered the rules are pretty uniform so we are going to stick to stock futures in all this discussion even when we studied options we are going to stick to stock options but remember rules you will have to just find out once and then you can apply exactly the same thing to commodities to currencies or anything else also okay now let us see what is the difference then you will understand why i am sticking to stock futures now as i said already when do stock futures expire all stock futures will expire on last thursday of the month when do index futures expire index futures also expire on last thursday of the month only now very recently just a couple of months ago a new contract has been introduced financial nifty that is again an index financial nifty contracts expire every thursday even in futures but so far financial nifty is not very popular it is just very very new in the market okay so as you can see as of now last thursday of the month becomes crucial and if thursday happens to be a holiday day previous to that okay now what are the rules for commodities some contracts will expire on 5th of a month some will expire on 17th of a month some will expire on last day of a month 
naturally there is no uniformity so i cannot say expiry or date this is the expiry day of our commodities because different type of commodities have different expiry days and that is why i am not going to stick to commodity even when i am explaining let us keep it uniform so i'll be explaining with respect to stocks and indices as except for financial nifty all other stocks and indices have same expiry last thursday of the month for futures contract okay so that is called derivative expiry day we are going to stick to it right now just the way nsc is guarantor for uh, honoring the contracts in stocks and indices there is mcx which guarantees about commodities multi commodity exchange okay now let us come to the spot price spot price is the price at which actually the shares are being traded not futures the shares so let us first understand underlying share is one thing derivative future is different thing both prices are related but they may not be the same okay so spot price is price in the spot market not in the futures market where directly you can buy 5 shares 10 shares 100 shares that is spot price at what price they are being traded okay now future price see future is what let us understand what is future contract future contract is of the type i will buy from you so many shares of this company at this price on last thursday of the month that is on the expiry day see when i will i will buy not i am buying not i have bought i will buy future that is why it is called a future contract okay now when you make a contract to buy future the other person is making a contract with you to sell the same future at that same price same quantity on last thursday of the month right there is a buyer position there is a seller position just the way in cash you can buy a thing and you sell a thing okay you go to market you are buying a dozen of apples or let us say a dozen of bananas you are a buyer and the fruit vendor is a seller correct same way suppose i want to buy a box of mangoes this is the month of march i go to market i go to my usual fruit vendor and i ask him for alfonso mangoes he says sir i don't have it today i will get it for you okay when will you get it i'll get it on next saturday no problem so i agree to buy he agrees to sell when next saturday so for this contract between me and him next saturday becomes the expiry day on that day he is supposed to give me the delivery how many mangoes four dozen all right same way i can make a contract with somebody else about shares on last thursday of the month i will buy from you 250 shares of reliance at what rate at 2000 rupees per share doesn't it become the same contract as i do a contract with my fruit vendor right only thing is in this case i don't know who is the seller and that is why i have to go through the exchange so the exchange will take care that the seller sells and buyer buys understood so what will be the price of that contract that is called a futures price futures price is not always same as the cash price because who will buy the buyer is expecting that the buy the shares will go up further in hand further in price and who is selling the seller is not expecting the price to go up he may be expecting the price to come down all right so we have to see to it that how much extra price is there and that difference we call it the cost of carry second thing one more thing is there whenever we are buying the futures we don't pay the full price we pay only partial price 
okay and that is why the this type of contracts they are called as leveraged contracts leverage means what suppose if i want to buy one lot which is always a lot fixed size you can't buy five shares in future okay a certain particular predefined number of shares is there so either you buy the full lot or you don't buy it either you sell the full lot or you don't sell it okay and naturally when i am buying a lot or i'm selling a lot i need not pay the full amount when will i pay the full amount when i actually get the thing at present i am paying only a token amount small amount usually this amount varies between 10% to 25% of the total value okay and remaining amount what about that so on that remaining amount i am charged interest which is i am paying only less right now i am keeping a deposit of only small amount right now so the balance amount interest is chargeable and that interest till the end of the month that is added to the spot price so future price is higher than spot price usually usually it is higher now expected future price this is the sum of spot price plus cost of carry and what is that cost of carry whatever that interest i told you about that is called cost of carry okay write down these equations so expected future price is spot price plus cost of carry remember actual future price may not be same as expected future price because there is something called emotions so though theoretically when you are adding cost of carry to spot price the total future price expected future price will always be higher than the spot price but if the share is falling people have a negative mindset about it that one month in future the share may be actually price lower so the price actual future price may be different than expected future price i repeat i repeat there is something called spot price if i say there are 2000 rupees is spot price for reliance and lot size is 250 how much is value of the full lot the equation is lot value is equal to number of shares in lot multiplied by its spot price so 250 into 2000 that is 5 lakhs so 5 lakhs becomes lot value for reliance but if i go to buy reliance future it will not be priced at 2000 it may be priced at 2020 why 20 rupees extra because i am not going to pay 5 lakhs right now i may be paying 1 lakh right now so 4 lakhs will attract interest on it it is as if the money is lent to me and that is why that extra 20 rupees are being taken from me as the time goes on decreasing till the end of the month end of the contract as time goes on decreasing this extra 20 rupees difference will also go on decreasing and on last thursday this difference will become zero or future price will be same as spot price when on the expiry day but if reliance is falling then i may not be willing to pay so much i may be expecting end of the month price may be 1980 only and then what happens then instead of having 20 rupees extra it may have 10 rupees 5 rupees extra or sometimes future price may even go below the actual price so what is the actual future price that is different what is expected future price that is different we are not much interested in expected future price we are more interested in what is the price in futures market right now and most of the time 95% of times future price is higher than spot price okay and how much is this difference it is called a cost of carry basically there are other components in it but mainly cost of carry now suppose the share is that company is going to give dividend in between i told you what is dividend part of the profit given to shareholders then that amount gets subtracted from this so then the expected future price becomes spot price plus cost of carry minus dividend okay in short remember future price is the spot price plus cost of carry minus dividends dividends are not given every day 
they may be once twice thrice in a year or something but other way around it's always spot price plus cost of carry because dividends become zero and what is cost of carry it is related to the interest rate on whatever amount we are not paying right now of the lot value understood now if future price is higher than spot price we say the future is in premium and as i said 95% of times futures are in premium sometimes something is bad news about the company shares are falling and then we find future price may be less than the spot price and then we say future is in discount okay understood this much so what is premium in futures contracts premium means how much higher is future price compared to spot price and what is discount discount is how much lower is future price compared to spot price okay sometimes cost of carry we express in the terms of percentage then it is called as basis meaning is the same it is just like cost of carry it is expressed in percentage terms okay so basis is positive means the stock for the future is in premium basis is negative means it is in discount so basis is not very commonly used term but sometimes we will find this uh, among discussions or in text it's written basis is found to be so much so basis is nothing else it is basically cost of carry only expressed in the different ways so not very important for us right now now lot size and lot value or that is also called contract amount as i said lot size it's predefined how many shares make one lot you cannot buy half lot we say it is quantized quantum means what a quantity certain fixed size so either you buy one quantum there is one lot two lots three lots you can't buy 1.5 lot okay so that is called lot size how many shares make one lot in terms of commodities how many kilograms of aluminium of which quality quality is also important there make one lot of aluminium how many grams of gold or how many barrels of crude oil make one lot right so these all are called lot sizes what is lot value price of one unit multiplied by the lot size that is the lot value so lot size multiplied by the price okay that is the contract amount as we are trading in future it the contract amount is in future which contracts are available as i said last thursday of the month the contracts expire on the expiry day at any given time you will find three different months contracts are available in future this month next month and the month after that so this month which month is this now march which is the last thursday 25th of march next month that is april 28th of april that is a thursday and may last thursday of may so these three contracts are available in futures terminology used is current month current month means which month is going on but it is in the terms of futures contracts remember that so which is the current month right now march this will continue till 25th march on 25th march it's last thursday all march contracts will expire on 26th march current month will become april march contracts are now gone expired so current month will become april okay so though in calendar the month is still march but in terms of future contracts the current month will be april from 26th march onwards anyway so right now let us come back to 14th of march current month is march next month that is april and far month that is may so these three terms are used current month next month far month all right now index contracts are also available for all these three months bank nifty and nifty are available for march april and may right now financial nifty 
the one newly introduced okay that is available for every thursday for this month and next month and far month okay now in addition to these three months index quarterly contracts are available but now futures are not traded only options are traded there okay earlier they had started with futures but it did not catch up so now they have stuck to only options so nifty options you can buy up to 5 years liquidity is not there nobody trades into them regularly but if somebody says i want to buy somebody says i want to sell i can right now buy 2026 december contract in options all right so let us not bother about it right now as of now let us stick to the futures so future contracts only are up to 3 months and weekly contracts for financial nifty for current month so weekly contracts nifty and bank nifty options are available which we are going to study in details in options but future contracts don't expire for nifty and bank nifty on every thursday okay so weekly futures options they are again file financial nifty but just as i said newly introduced not popular now we come to margin suppose if i want to buy or sell one lot of futures i have to keep some money with my broker either in the form of money cash or in the form of shares suppose i have a portfolio what my broker does he asks me to pledge that portfolio with him and against that portfolio he gives me some money so that i can buy or sell futures but if my portfolio is worth 10 lakhs does he give me 10 lakhs margin no he doesn't give me a limit of 10 lakhs he will give me a limit of maybe 8 lakhs 5 lakhs depending on the quality of shares which i have if i have good quality shares market front liners he may give me 80 85% of limit if my shares are of poor quality he may not give me any limit this difference between actual price of share and how much limit he gives is called haircut haircut right so uh, good quality shares like reliance we get 15% haircut 85% limit is available if i say poor quality shares they are b group z group there is 100% haircut even if i mortgage them even if i place them i don't get any limits why because those shares are not of good quality they are not financially sound companies okay so whenever we are talking of investment it's advisable that you go for front liners don't go for penny stocks as far as possible anyway let us come back here now what are margins if i want to buy one lot of any share some money or shares equivalent to that money after the haircut i have to pledge with my broker and this is called margin how much is this margin depending on quality of share it is 10% to 25% of the total lot value that is taken as the margin all right now say for example nifty nifty how much is the value of nifty one lot consider nifty is around 15000 right now lot size of nifty is 75 so 15000 into 75 so the lot value becomes a little under 11 and a half lakhs somewhere around that so if i want to take a position in nifty futures which is worth 11 and a half lakhs how much margin i have to keep i have to keep around 1 and a half lakh into margin or using 1 and a half lakh i am controlling almost 11 and a half lakh 12 lakh worth of nifty so the leveraging is 1 is to 8 means using one part of capital i am enjoying eight parts of exposure eight times the exposure okay so this 1 and a half lakh which i keep that is called margin okay it is a deposit why is it taken so that it should not happen somebody is making losses and so he runs away and does not honor his contract before 2008 Uh, sebi was not that strict about the margin set off and in 2008 there was a very big fall in nifty and even in sensex uh, sensex came from 21000 plus to 7700 whereas nifty came from uh, 6300 to 2200 almost one third levels and it happened that 
because of liver aging you know liver aging has the advantage that if your share goes up by 5% your capital goes up by 50% because you are liver age 1 is to 10 but if your share goes down by 5% 50% of your capital is also gone and if it goes down by more than 10% your losses are more than your entire capital and people simply said we don't have money to pay and as they said we don't have money to pay brokers as per the rule if client doesn't pay broker has to pay so brokers had to make up brokers were insured but uh, sometimes the leveraging was so big and without any proper security positions were taken by people that insurance amounts also ran up then brokers had to sell their offices their houses their licenses to make up for the money there were a few suicides and all so thereafter sebi became more vigilant that this much money you have to take compulsorily if you don't take that the broker is punishable and no insurance is paid to him then so these are the margins what are the margins one is called initial margin this initial margin is decided by sebi securities and exchange board of india guidelines are given to nsc so nsc imposes this much money you have to take okay with if the client says i don't have this much money don't allow him to take the position now intraday margins are even lesser using 25000 30000 40000 rupees you can take position in intraday in futures okay uh, but overnight if you want to keep position then 1 and 1/2 lakh is the minimum margin required as of now minimum so this initial margin that is a theoretically calculated maximum loss you can have in a day statistical calculations are used for this and uh, method is called value at risk method how much risk are you having in a day maximum upper limits more than that is not likely okay so this value is obtained from historical volatility and uh, based on that that much loss maximum is possible so that much margin is taken as initial margin now suppose if you make some losses in that what will happen initial margin it will be deducted from that but for the next day now your there is a margin shortfall so your broker will tell you as much money you have lost yesterday you make it up for today you give me that much money okay this second type of margin is called mark to market margin either it is called m2m or mtm mark to market this is amount lost or gain daily every day when the market closes suppose you have bought reliance at 2000 reliance reaches 2010 how much money you have made 250 is the lot size of reliance so 250 into 10 you have made 2 and a half thousand so the seller of the contract from his account 2 and a half will be deducted and put in your account every day accordingly next day it reaches from 2022 sorry 2010 to 2030 5000 more will be deducted from seller put in your account say i am to am account set next day it went down and closed at 1980 so 50 rupees into 250 12500 will be taken from your account now put in account of the seller so this m to m actually is settled every day and if there is a shortfall of margin you have to fulfill it every day okay usually brokers give within 24 hours you give if you don't do that they will square off your futures position okay so how much loss you have made to compensate for it that margin every day but now taking this every day is not very convenient so instead of m to m margin most of the brokers they have another type of margin called maintenance margin what is maintenance margin again it is statistically calculated how much loss is as an average possible in 2 to 3 days so they will take up in advance only so m to m settlement is done from this extra margin which they have already taken along with the initial margin okay so then m to m is not separately required only if your losses are more than that only then m to m will be asked other way around this extra margin initial that maintenance margin will take care of small losses which happen during you the whenever you are holding the position okay and the last one is special margin special margin is not every day sometimes some stocks start moving erratically up down very big moves so sebi says increase the margin for this now nsc increases the margin 
So you have to pay this extra margin. That is called spatial margin. Once this extra volatility in the stock lowers, dies off, then the extra, the spatial margin is removed. So essentially, how much margin you have to keep? That is initial margin plus either maintenance margin or M to M margin, and spatial margin only if required. And it is extremely rare to have spatial margin. Okay, so. This much margin, unless you keep with your broker, broker will not allow you to keep, take a position. Okay. Now, once this much part is over, what are the margins at all? Let us continue further. Open interest. What is open interest? Now, see, let us say two people are there, A and B. A is having bullish view about a stock. So, he wants to buy one lot of future. B has to has negative view about the stock he says it's going to go down b doesn't own the shares b doesn't have shares of this company but his view is share is going to go down now see what happens a wants to buy a futures contract b says i will sell the futures contract now he doesn't have the shares now what will he do can he sell yes he can sell why because he is not going to sell the shares today. He is going to just make a contract to sell in future. Take an example. A builder is coming up with a building. When does he start selling the flats? He sells the flat even before the building is constructed. Does he have the flat that time? No, he doesn't have. Then how can he sell? He is not selling. He is making a contract to sell on a future date. So before that date, if he constructs that flat, that's okay. He can give the delivery. Same way, if you are selling the shares or futures, you don't have to own the shares in hand. What you can do? Before last Thursday, if you buy the shares, then you can give the delivery to this buyer. So what B says? A says, I want to buy this share. When? Last Thursday of the month. So at what price? He puts his quote. That is called bid price. So he puts his bid that I want to buy this share at 1000 rupees. B say, B thinks otherwise. B thinks that share is going to go down. So he will at present make the contract to sell and then buy the share at lower price. So what he does? He puts his offer at 1001 rupees. This is called offer price or ask price. What buyer is quoting? Bid price. What seller is quoting? Ask price. Will there be deal? No deal. Why? Because buyer is at 1000, seller is at 1001. Now buyer becomes greedy and he increases his bid by 1 rupee and buys that contract. Now see what has happened. On last day, one lot of shares B will have to buy and hand them over to A. That is the contract. So anytime before the last day, before the expiry date, this will have to be done. This is said to be open interest. The interest has been created by one unit. Okay. Open interest is always measured in the terms of number of lots which are open. Now, share price may go up, share price may go down. Accordingly, Future price may will also go up or down. Future price started going up. Now B is frightened. He sold at 1001. The price has now reached 1020. So he's in a loss. What he does? Now he wants to buy it back and close his position. But A is not willing to sell. So B puts his bid price at 1020. And C, another person complies. He sells it. So now for B, what happened? One position was opened, one position he has closed. So for him, he's out of that position. His position is zero. But now the contract has got switched between A and C. Open interest is still one only. C is more bearish. So C sells one more lot, which is purchased by D, another person. How much is the open interest now? Two units, because there are two buyers and two lots are sold. This is called open interest. It's the number of outstanding positions which are not squared off till that time. Okay? 
and usually open interest at end of the day is important because in between the day has no meaning by the time the figure is flashed more positions have opened or closed okay so intraday open interest is not very reliable end of the day they see how many positions are actually open we do use open interest uh, for different purposes we are going to see that in uh, later on but remember how much is the open interest that becomes important because that many shares the seller of the contract have to buy from open market and give it to the buyer of the contract okay now using these we make make some different combinations and these are called as strategies strategies are done using only futures which is rare using only options which is very common and some using future as well as option they are also common okay so what is strategy strategy is combination of different positions in order to lower the risk and you must have come across another common term hedging i have already told you hedge is a fence so hedging is protection of your portfolio that is called hedging so that your losses are minimized in case the stock goes down market crashes that is called hedging now sometimes what happens is open interest starts increasing so much that it is now impossible that all the sellers of the future contract can buy that many shares now earlier example we took 1 crore shares were available in the market but suppose open interest already reaches 80 lakhs now what happens actually can is it will it be possible to buy 80 lakh shares when only 1 crore are available people may not be selling people may say we don't want to sell we want to hold it shares then nsc stock exchange stops further open interest in that particular position now you can't create a new position in this stock you can close existing position because that will decrease the open interest but you can't open new position so the stock is said to be in ban period if the stock is in ban period you cannot take any new position in it you can close your existing position you cannot say i'm closing in morning and opening in evening again you can't do that once you close it's closed so in a few days open interest falls down it becomes to more reasonable level and then again the trading begins again the ban is removed lifted so which shares are in ban period where will you get this information this information you will get on the website nseindia.com okay so in nseindia.com you just type there is small window just say shares in ban period they will tell you which shares are in ban period it's possible there may be no shares in ban period okay so it's very much possible because this is only exceptional only when open interest increases beyond certain limits 80% then only the share is banned other way around it doesn't come in ban period and that is why ban period is exceptional but before taking a trade you should know if a share is in ban period okay sometimes still opposite happens we find that some stock is having some manipulation possibly prices are being rigged in it so if sebi suspects that the prices are being rigged manipulated that stock is kept under scrutiny and then there may be curbs that is trading is not permitted in those stocks or sometimes you know the contracts are forced to expire now today actually but then they say no no stop trading we are temporarily suspending this from fndo whatever is the price today all contracts expire immediately so this is then the stock is getting suspended from uh, fndo sometimes it is temporary and if sebi finds really something was fishy in it they may remove that stock from fndo okay so all these things are possible in futures options both and we have to take care if when we are trading we have to just be sure uh, that it is not in ban period if it is suspended anyway you cannot trade it but if it is suspended you are holding the position and it is suspended and closed down you have to be alert that my position is open or it has already been closed down okay so that is all about futures now